The Fromoro map of the world has never left Italy before for obvious reasons. Uh, it's incredibly precious, it's incredibly large, uh, it's incredibly fragile. So we've had to overcome all those obstacles in persuading our colleagues at the Marciano Library to, to make it available to us, uh, which they have very generously. It's a map that sort of summarises in a way all the thought that had gone into map making up until that time. Uh, when people look at it, they'll be surprised at the size, the form of it, um, which, as I mentioned, is sort of the world upside down when you look at it. Um, there's no America, there's no Australia. But what is detailed in great detail is Asia, uh, for the first time really, in many respects. Uh, places like Japan depicted for the first time on a map. Java is very clearly depicted on it. The island of Madagascar is there. Uh, it's labelled as Diab and on that island in a tiny, tiny little inscription it says, here begins the dark sea and it's a reference to the unknown beyond across the Indian Ocean which sort of hints in a rather um, uh, imaginative way at, at the idea that there was more out there but we just didn't, they didn't know at the time what it was. From Moro was uh, a monk, uh, a lay person who worked in the monastery. Uh, little is known about him. It seems extraordinary that somebody that could produce something as extraordinarily beautiful and important as this map would not be better documented. But such is the world in the period that he was living in, in the 1400s. We know that he lived for uh, most of his life in the monastery off Venice for 50 or so years. Uh, we know that people visited the map, they commented on it. It was regarded as one of the miracles of Venice. Uh, it was commented on from its earliest, uh, the earliest period of its history. We know that it was produced between 1448 and 1453. The dating of the maps varied over time, but that seems to be the most reliable um, period that it can be narrowed down to. When the public sees the map, uh, they will see 3,000 inscriptions written across the surface of it. Hundreds, what, thousands of place names, uh, descriptions. There are very descriptive um, signposts, if you like, that are painted in red and gold and blue that are littered all over the map's surface. It's a map that um, is what's referred to in some respects as transitional, in that it, it marks the period between the end of the medieval era and the beginning of the Renaissance. It, it uses Portland charts, which were used uh, by mariners for the Mediterranean. Uh, so you see the Mediterranean depicted in great detail. It also brings in the Ptolemy uh, Geographia and, and its mapping. And it also incorporates biblical references. So you see this incredibly dense, layered, very beautiful artefact, which is huge. And I'm sure people will be astounded to see when they visit it here in the National Library.